Another Greek mathematician who also studied in Alexandria in the 3rd century BC was Archimedes. He is said to have lived sometime about 287 BC and 212 BC, only a generation or two after Euclid. Similar to Euclid, he, little is known about his life other than that he was born, lived most of his life, and later died in Syracuse, Sicily. Yet, there are many stories and antidotes about him and his skill as an engineer. One of the best known stories of Archimedes tells of him helping King Hieron of Syracuse to determine if the crown he commissioned out of pure gold was in fact pure gold, or if the goldsmith had taken some of the gold and replaced it with an equal weight of silver. Archimedes was said to have been in the public bath when he came to realize how to settle the question. After observing the water overflowing out of the tub, he submerged himself. Uh, he realized that the crown with silver in it could replace, displace a greater volume of the water than a quantity of gold equal to the weight of the crown. Realizing the solution, it is said that he ran naked through the streets of Syracuse shouting, Eureka, Eureka. Archimedes was considered a creative genius in his time. He is best known for his military innovations like siege engines, pulleys, and pumps, and the Archimedes screw, which is still used in parts of the world today. But his real passion was pure mathematics. And unlike Euclid, his treatises included only his new work, and therefore he himself contributed greatly to the advancement of mathematical knowledge in Greece. Archimedes was one of the first to produce formulas to calculate the areas of regular shapes. He used a method of describing new shapes by using shapes he had already understood. In this way, he also came up with an estimate for pi. His approximation of pi relies heavily on the result from one of his other theorems. If an angle of a triangle be bisected and the straight line cutting that angle cut the base also, the segment of the base will have the same ratio as the remaining sides of the triangle. And if the segment of the base have the same ratio as the remaining sides of the triangle, the straight line joined from the vertex to the point of the section will bisect the angle of the triangle. The way in which he determined an approximation for pi was based on the fact that the circumference of a circle lies between the perimeter of the inscribed and circumscribed regular polygons of n sides. And as n increases, the difference in the two circumferences from the two perimeters becomes smaller. This kind of approach to a problem later became known as the method of exhaustion because he would continually exhaust the possibilities until reaching the correct answer. He success successfully inscribed and circumscribed the circle in polygons of sides 6, 12, 24, 48, and 96. His estimate for the numerical value of pi can be found in his text, The Measurement of a Circle, but at this time he did not call it pi as that was introduced in the 1700s. Also throughout this proof, he used approximations for square roots without giving any explanation for how he got them. To begin this proof, by simply drawing a circle and marking off any point on the circumference with chords of the length of the radius, you can create six vertices. Then tangents are drawn from the six vertices and another regular hexagon is produced that circumscribes the circle. From the regular hexagon, we can then create a 12-sided polygon by bisecting the arc on the circumscribed circle by each section of the hexagon and using the new additional points and vertices to form a dodecagon. The repetition of this process will eventually yield a 96-sided polygon. If little pn and big pn represent the perimeters of the inscribed and circumscribed regular polygons of n sides, we can then write a a set of bounds for C, the circumference of the circle. He began with both the inscribed and circumscribed hexagons, creating a ratio between the diameter of the circle and an angle from the center of the circle to a point on either hexagon as one third of a right angle. He used proportions and created a bound for the perimeters using the square root of three. He did not explain exactly how he got approximations for the square root of three, but those that he used are rather close. Using the results from his triangular proposition, he was able to continually amend proportions and bounds from little pn is less than c, which is less than big pn, as he repeatedly bisected the chords of the original hexagons by creating polygons with 96 sides. He then solved for 
little pn and pn separately, but by the same method until he found the following bounds for c. Modernly, you can do the same computation using the harmonic mean of little pn and big pn as big pn 2n and the ge geometric mean of little pn and big pn big p 2n as little pn little p 2n and then using recursion relation to compute these means until reaching the 96-sided polygon and arriving at the bounds presented. Archimedes also used his method of exhaustion in his proof of the quadrature of a parabola. A problem where he finds the area of the segment formed by drawing any chord of the parabola. In this problem, he exhausts the area of the parabola segment by inscribing a triangle of the same base of the segment and a height of the same distance from the chord to the point on the parabola where the tangent is parallel to the chord. The two sides of the triangle create another parabolic segment that we can repeat this process on, and this process continues. If he designated the area of the original triangle, ABC, as a symbol for triangle, he could then create ratios of the areas of the smaller triangle based off of it. You could then say that triangle ADC is equal to one eighth of the original triangle, and triangle CEB is equal to one eighth of the original triangle. Adding these two together, you get one fourth times the original triangle. By repeating the process on the four smaller triangles made from the triangles ABC and CEB, you can see that each of their areas is equal to 1 8 times 1 8 times the original triangle, or 1 over 8 squared times the original triangle. Adding these four little triangles together, we get 1 over 4 squared times the original triangle. We can then continue this process and create a geometric sequence which sum converges to 4 over 3 times the original triangle. But the modern, by the modern for, formula for the converging geometric sequence. At this time, Archimedes, however, did not have the ability to describe its convergence in theory, and instead proved that if the polygons exhausted the parabolic segment created by the first line segment AB, then its area could be neither greater or less than 4 over 3 times the original triangle. This finishes up our video on Archimedes and his contributions to Greek mathematics and is the final video in our short series on Greek math history. Thanks for watching the final video in our series, The History of Greek Mathematics. Click on the links here to watch the full playlist, subscribe to our YouTube page, or go to centerofmath.org to mo learn more about our textbook products.